mein Name ist Detlef Ganten. Ich habe beruflich mit Gesundheit zu tun. Ich bin Arzt, komme aus der Charité und dem Max-Delbold-Zentrum für Molekularmedizin. Und wie angekündigt im Nebenberuf Präsident des Weltgesundheitsgipfels. Health Summit. The World Health Summit. Gründungsfundamente. Rest on three pillars. You're probably aware of this. There are seven billion people in the world today of whom around uh, 300 million are in Europe, 300 million in North America, 150 million in Japan and the surrounding islands, uh, plus around two or 300 million privileged people in uh, the world. And these people have access to medical care that is state-of-the-art. Between five and six billion people, out of these seven billion people, uh, either not treated at all or poorly treated. That's the state of play as regards health and health care in the world. And that is the case, although scientific progress has made enormous leaps and bounds over the past 100 years. If you bear in mind what medical care looked like 100 years ago and compare that with the situation now, there's a world of difference. But you'll be aware of that yourselves. But very few people have access to health care. And the devastating thing is that the world's state of health is not getting better. It's deteriorating. So you might not believe that, but it definitely is the case. And the number of people who die day by day in this world because they have no access to health care or only to inferior health care is much bigger than the figure of number of people who die as a result of uh, wars, earthquakes, and so on and so forth. But these people die, no notice taken of their fate, and other things grab the headlines in the media. Uh, the World uh, Health Summit has made that its task to deal with the situation. Uh, the G7, G8 meetings, for instance, the one held at, uh, at, uh, in Germany, the Leopoldina and other scientific organizations in Germany pointed out to the participants uh, that uh, this should be taken note of. Now this was done, but you'll probably not heard about much in the media. Now this G8 summit that was held in Germany or is also held elsewhere, individual agendas are set and uh, certain topic items then have a certain impact on the agenda. The third pillar was the Charité Teaching Hospital. In 2009, it celebrated its 100th anniversary. The Charité Teaching Hospital was once the world's major teaching facility in the world, in the world of medicine. Rudolf Virchow had his 80th birthday. People came all over the world to celebrate that. Uh, there was the introduction of natural scientific progress in the realm of medicine. During the 300th year anniversary, said we'll move on from the present to the future, but we'll refer to Rudolf Virchow and invited people from all over the world to attend. Indeed, people came. We invited people from the realm of science, politics, people in the health economy, across the whole board from the pharmaceuticals industry to medical equipment and technology and other parts of the health industry, which is a large segment, the largest segment of the industry worldwide, much bigger than the automotive industry, construction and plant engineering. And we talked about what can be done to improve global health. And a number of proposals were submitted, which I can't go into detail here, of course. But it was stated, and this was astonishing, that there is no body in the world that is so interdisciplinary in character from politics, business, social aspects, and so on and so forth, in which there is such a broad-based discussion. Of course, there is the WHO, but those of you who know the WHO will know that uh, it consists of government uh, delegates, and a representative of the World Health Organization can only do what the, the governments in the world have done in their majority. 
have resolved in their majority. But this may not be known to you, but there is a, a whole host of organizations that are active in the health sector, but do not pursue the same, pursue the same objectives. But of course, it'd be easy to say, oh, well, all they want to do is earn money. Of course, there are plenty of them who want to earn money or gain prestige for themselves, be that as it may. But there are antagonistic groups in this sector. They do not talk to each other, but if they do, they are very inimical towards each other, fight each other, and so on and so forth. Now, the World Health Summit was set up uh, against that background, against that backdrop. It met in 2009 and in 10 and 11, and now this has become, uh, an institute has become branded. People now talk about the Davos of medicine in Berlin, but we have a different approach because we are in a different night, but the Berlin said it's uh, stated in its coalition, government coalition agreement that the only uh, Congress that should be uh, incorporated is this one because it's designed to provide a strategic orientation for Berlin. It should satisfy high ethical standards. It should represent Berlin and give it a face in the world of uh, health and education. That's what we are doing ourselves. It's a fascinating and intriguing challenges. It was a great deal of time and effort, as you can imagine, because it's not so easy to raise the requisite funds. And after all, conferences of this kind cost money. Now we've got a World Health Summit Foundation that is supported by the government in Berlin. So the financing of the conference is one problem. What do you focus on in infectious diseases, uh, nutritional uh, factors, non-communicable disease, heart-lung diseases, cancer, in IT, which is of the utmost importance in order to ensure that the very efficient health system becomes much more efficient. And all these are issues that we focus on. If you're interested, have a look at the website. We're interested, of course, in uh, uh, viewers. We have a limit to about 1,500 people in the Langbeck Facial House, but anybody who's interested is welcome to come along at any time.